Hello all, welcome to our second note in uh, our series of notes on importing data into ServiceNow. This note is going to cover the topic of creating a, a data source. Um, as a quick review, on uh, in note one, we talked about um, how normally when we're thinking of doing an import of data, we think of two data entities, the source entity that holds the data and the target entity that would be within side ServiceNow that we want to get the data loaded into. And I mentioned that ServiceNow introduces an intermediary table between those two steps. Uh, we're going to refer to that as a staging table. ServiceNow calls it an import set table. So this second note covers uh, really the first activity that we need to accomplish in order to begin building our import. And that is to tell the platform a little bit about the source, what type of source it is, how it can connect to it, uh, tell the platform what data we want to import, and then um, finally we're going to tell the platform how we would like it to create that staging table um, to hold the data prior to processing actually and actually um, loading into our um, target table. So first step is uh, creation of what ServiceNow calls a data source. Data source, really all that it is, is a record in a table in ServiceNow that stores the parameters that the platform needs in order to uh, understand the type of the source data entity. So really what we're pulling data from, where it's located, how to connect to it. Um, we'll then further need to tell the platform what data uh, we're interested in importing. Do we want it all? Do we want a subset? Um, so we'll set parameters for that. And then finally, we're going to tell um, the platform what we would like for it to uh, name and label that staging table that it's going to create for us when we kick off our first import. So uh, data source records uh, stored in ServiceNow in an out-of-box table that, that uh, ServiceNow named data source. I'm sorry, it labeled data source. The actual name of the table is sys underscore data underscore source. Um, I've got my personal developer instance up here. Um, one of the things you're going to learn <clears throat> in ServiceNow, if you ever want to look at a list of records in a table, um, you can come over here to the application navigator area and up in the filter navigator, you can, you can enter the name of the table um, and then uh, uh, dot list and it will actually display the records that ex currently exist in that table. So I'm going to show you what uh, the ServiceNow um, data source table looks like. So I'm going to the filter navigator and the name of that table is sys underscore data underscore source and I'm just going to say dot list to see a list of the records in the data source table. You can see now it's showing me the data source table and there are no records in um, the data source table currently. My personal developer instance, I have not created any data sources yet, so naturally that, um, that table is empty. Another way we could use to get to uh, this uh, data source table and view the data sources that we have currently out there is to actually navigate through uh, the um, <clears throat> application navigator and we could do that by going to system import sets. Um, and then we would go and we would look for administration data sources. So right here, administration data sources, and that takes us to the exact same place. So one thing you're gonna learn, uh, this application navigator is nice, it's handy, but there's nothing magic about it. All these are, for the most part, are links to um, tables. Um, or records in tables um, in the ServiceNow database. So one of the one of the greatest things I've ever learned about ServiceNow, and it, it came to me from an instructor in one of my very first training courses. He said essentially everything in ServiceNow is a record in a table someplace, and that I'm learning is very very true. So. Um, we could, uh, you know, we can use the navigator to get there. We can enter the command to look at the records. Regardless, all we're looking at here is a list of records in a table. In this case, it's the data source table. I haven't created any data sources. There are no records, so I get no records to display. 
So with that said, let's go ahead and start the creation of our first data source. So from this list view, I'm just simply going to click the new button <clears throat> and that is going to take me into the form to build my first data source. So essentially we're adding a record to that data source table. Um, and I'll cover some of this um, as much of this as I can. I know the note covered a lot of it, but I really wanted just to give you a visual example of, of, of how this works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give um, our data source a name and I'm just going to name it test import. This is just a name that you can use to find your, your um, data source back. You can, you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, next, these next two fields, uh, the note mentioned <clears throat> that we need to tell um, ServiceNow uh, how we want that staging table created when it creates that table automatically for us. And it allows us to choose the name, the label of that table. So we can refer to it however we'd like. So. I'm going to go ahead and set the label of that table to be test import and hit tab and it is automatically going to populate <clears throat> what it would like the name to be u underscore test underscore import. That's the actual table name for those of you that, that know a bit about relational databases. This would be the actual table name in the database if you wanted to do a query against it. Um, you would use u underscore test underscore import as the table name. The label is just a nice extra that ServiceNow provides for us, a sort of a um, looks good kind of name that we can uh, we can give it. Okay, so we've told it uh, what we want that staging table named. <clears throat> the next thing is to tell it uh, a little bit about the data source that we are connecting and pulling data from. Uh, ServiceNow comes out of the box uh, with the ability to connect to several different types of data source. Um, you can see here the type attribute currently is set to file, but I'm going to go ahead and drop it down so you can see um, uh, ServiceNow can work with uh, JDBC compatible databases. So for example, if you, you want to connect to an Oracle database or SQL Server database, MySQL database, whatever your database might be, um, you could select that. Um, <clears throat> LDAP, OIDC REST, and then custom uh, a custom script could be used to, as your source of data. So I'm going to just show you a few of the JDBC ones. They're, they're used pretty commonly. So you'll notice that when I select JDBC as my type, it now asks for a lot more parameters that it needs in order to locate and connect to that database um, <clears throat> in order to pull the data. Uh, use mid server, I'm just going to mention briefly. Um, ServiceNow needs to uh, have a way of getting onto uh, a corporate network if there's, say, a database that's running uh, behind a firewall um, on a corporate network. Uh, MID servers are the pass-through that are used by ServiceNow to enable that. I'm not going to go into detail on that now. <clears throat> I think maybe I'll publish a note or two on setup of MID servers, but just know that that's a pass-through to allow you to get from get to from ServiceNow's server um, across a um, uh, uh, firewall and into the the corporate uh, network that you wanted to to pull data from. Um, with JDBC selected, we need to tell it what type of database we're working with. Out of the box here, it comes with MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server. You can add to that list, so you could choose if you're doing an if this is an Oracle server, you could uh, you could choose Oracle, or if it was a MySQL server, you could choose MySQL. Um, it then needs uh, for us to populate the name of the database naturally so it can find it, the port that the database is running on. You'll see over here that uh, you'll probably likely need to enter a username and password in order to connect to uh, that database. Here's the server name that you would enter. Um, that would be a connectable server name <clears throat> that um, ServiceNow would, would use to connect to. And then um, we get down to telling it, okay, now that we have a connection, what exactly do you want to pull from this, in this case, JDBC database? database. Um, you could pull all rows from a table, in which, in which case you would leave this selected, and then you would tell it the table name here. Or you can do a specific SQL statement, in which case um, you would actually uh, write the SQL statement here, in which case you could do a where clause, um, you could join tables, um, you could pull things together to get the data set that you're actually interested in importing. 
So that's a bit on the JDBC type. Um, I'm not going to go through these others. I've got the note that's got in got information on the parameters that you would fill out for these. Uh, and in our case, we are going to use file for simplicity's sake. The process for setting these up is exactly the same other than you can see the different attributes that you need to um, get set up uh, depending upon the type of the source. So we're going to use a file. When I have file selected, you can see there is a drop down here for, okay, what format of file are we dealing with? We're we talking about a CSV file. Is this uh, Excel, JSON, XML? We're going to use an Excel file because I've created one um, <clears throat> that will make, uh, make it work well for our little uh, demonstration here. Further then, okay, it's an Excel file. Is there a sheet number that we need to, to pull from? So this is, again, what data do you want to pull from this file? Um, we're going to leave those just set uh, to zero. There's no sheet number, and the header row is standard in our Excel spreadsheet. So, um, And with that, okay, the last thing I'll mention here is the file retrieval method. So we're telling it it's an Excel file. Now it needs to know, okay, where do I go to get this thing? Um, you could use any number of file transfer protocols um, that you needed to. And in this case, for simplicity's sake, again, we're going to use uh, an attachment. So I'm actually going to attach the file to this data source so that it, um, it accesses it that way. OK, with those parameters filled out, I'm going to go ahead and click on the hamburger menu here. You could click Submit. That would take you back. Hey, let's just do that. I'll click Submit. Let me get rid of that. And you can see now it's it's submitted the form and it's taken me back to our data sources. And you can now see we have one data source record out there, which is our test import data source. It tells us the type of data it's pulling file. It's an Excel file and when it was updated. I'm going to go back into that import now. And we'll see now that we have the uh, initial um, data source uh, created. Um, we have a few extra tools here. We're not going to talk about uh, this yet. We will be talking about import sets more. This, that's our staging table. We'll be talking about that more in the next note. But for now, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach the Excel spreadsheet um, <clears throat> to this uh, data source so that it knows how to access the data. So there's a little paper clip icon right here we can use to manage attachments. Before I do that, I'm going to show you what our um, data source actually looks like. And this is it. It's a very simple Excel spreadsheet that's got one, two, three, four, five columns, name, address, city, state, zip, five rows of sample data that I've, that I've included there. You can see that the first row here, we do have a header row in uh, this Excel spreadsheet. That's important. Um, I did some testing, and it's very useful to go ahead and put a header row in. What ServiceNow is going to do when it actually kicks off the import is it's going to take uh, this header row, and it's going to use each of these values to create the fields within the staging table. So when we actually execute our import the first time, ServiceNow is going to come to this uh, the, this data source, it's going to look at the attributes that exist in it, and it's going to create a field for each. So there will be a name field, an address field, a city field, a state field, and a zip field created. If you did an SQL statement as your data source and you're connecting to a JDBC uh, compatible database, uh, the, the attribute list of your SQL statement would be used to create the uh, columns in the staging table. So whatever you're pulling, it's going to create a field for. <clears throat> okay, back to our data source. I'm going to click on the icon here to uh, choose the file that we're going to use as our simple data source. It's called test import. You can see our sample data there. I'm going to open it. And we now have attached our um, Excel spreadsheet um, as our data source which is kind of mimicking, mimicking, in our case, maybe a, an SQL database or a SQL statement that we're pulling from. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save or submit <clears throat> um, our uh, data source again. And we are now, uh, we now have established the, the connection parameters necessary for ServiceNow to go to our source, understand its type, 
pull the data we've we've requested, create the um, staging table with the label and the name that we prefer, and then load that data into that staging table. So that's it for this note. Next step will be to um, actually do a test run of this and, uh, and then take a little bit of deeper look into import sets and our staging table and what ServiceNow does uh, the first time you kick off an import and it loads uh, data into the staging table. So uh, looking forward to that and I will see you all in the next note.